All right. Now that we've created our accounts, both organizational and user accounts, and set up the associated permissions, I can now walk you through um, the site as a whole, just as more of a site tour, just to get, show you what features there are and where to find them. And then there will be dedicated videos um, to each of those functionalities as far as possible. So this is now your homepage, the surveys page, which you can access by clicking surveys at the top there. So in general, these are all your main pages that you can access. Um, so your surveys page is where you can view your surveys. A survey is a set of, it's a data set. So that's a set of images and or videos. So basically each survey is a discrete set of, of files um, and then that's listed as separate objects here. So we've got um, two. So I'm I'm currently logged in with my personal account. And I'm a member of two organizations. Um, we've got Wilder Conservation and then a fictional organization called Wild Parks. So in this case, I've got access to two surveys. Um, one's called Forest and Gummel. That's owned by Wildlife Conservation. Um, it consists of 3,200 images and zero videos. Um, and there are 20 camera sites in that survey. Um, the other survey I've got access to here is called Delta A 2017. That's on the Wild Parks. And for this survey, I've only got read only access, which is why I can't edit it in any way, but I can view results and, and, and look at the survey um, and stuff like that. Um, so the, the surveys are covered on the left hand side. Um, so you've got all options relating to the survey here on the left. And then on the right, you've got annotation sets. So an annotation set is not sure what its name implies. It's a set of annotations for that set of images. Typically, you only want one set of annotations for a particular set of images. However, there are some specific use cases where it can be useful to have multiple sets of annotations. And so that, that is supported. So you can, you'll see you can have multiple sets of annotation set, uh, annotations, one set of images. Um, the cases where that could be useful are perhaps having different um, workers annotate um, for, for, for testing and validation purposes, um, trying out different classifiers, stuff like that. You want to be able to just try out different, uh, have, have different sets of annotations. So that's that. In terms of um, your surveys now, um, you've got your options here on the left. And as, as I said before, we'll go into detail later. But you can edit an existing survey. You'll see there's a bunch of different options. You can add um, site coordinates, stuff like that. Um, and then you know change the species classifier so to associated with the survey, edit some timestamps, do those sorts of things um, all there. Um, you can also add more files. So if you've got an existing survey, you can add more um, files to, to the existing survey. But um, and there's no limit to the amount of um, data you can have in a particular survey, but we just like to highlight trying to aim for a maximum of about 300,000 images in a survey. Um, if, it's, if you start getting a lot more than that, things just start getting a bit slow when you try and um, try and do any processing on that data set. Um, you can then add new annotation sets here as well, um, and that's where you can set up your labels um, and set up your AI translations, what percentage of the data set you want to annotate it, stuff like that and then it'll create your new annotation set there. Delete, in this case, we'll delete the whole survey. And then on the right-hand side here, we've got the, the buttons pertaining to individual data sets, uh, annotation sets. So um, first and foremost, you've got the details button, which gives you the details of that annotation set. Um, so that's the counts of the different um, data units for that survey. So clusters, images, sightings, um, individually ID'd individuals. Um, what types of annotation you've performed on that task to help you keep track of what you've performed, what you haven't. So for example, you can check uh, to see whether you've performed the AI check work um, uh, uh, job, um, whether you've done informational tagging, in this case, it's been performed for the line data set, um, whether you've checked the, the, the sightings or the bounding boxes, as well as you, whether you've performed an individual ID um, and that sort of stuff. You can then um, launch an annotation set for manual annotation. So this is where you create jobs that then your workers then can pick up and manually annotate. 
and this is a number of different types of annotation tasks. And again, we'll come into come back to this in a lot more detail later. But you can work from left to right, which is the much more uh, the much more coarse options being on the left, and the much more granular options being on the right. So um, you start off by labeling your species in your clusters. Then you can check yourself against the AI. Then you can add some extra additional information or tags. Um, then you can do multi-species differentiation, which we'll come back to later. Um, then you can do sighting box correction, which is just um, correct those boxes, um, adding new ones, deleting them, stuff like that, and then individual ID. So once you launch it, it will then um, become available for your workers. Um, next, you can edit your labels for your annotation set. So there you can see all the different labels available to us. Um, so you can see all the top level labels in this case, and their hotkeys, which are all editable. Um, you can add, or you can, for instance, then select the different levels, so say uh, antelope. Um, and then I'll show you all your antelope labels. You can add additional labels that will now go to this level called antelope, um, both in terms of label and hotkey. Um, and then you can um, uh, save those changes there. Um, and then lastly, um, you can view the results associated with the survey. So that's, um, you know, there's a bunch of different options there, um, but primarily you can download a CSV of all the, um, of all the images, their labels, their timestamps, all those sort of things. Um, and there's even custom CSV options if you want. Um, you can also uh, um, download your files with the labels and the metadata, sorted by species, all those sorts of things. Um, and then a couple other stuff that's not um, of too much importance at this stage. Um, and then lastly, you can, you can delete um, a particular annotation set should you wish to do so. And we'll come back to the shortly as well, how to create a new survey um, from scratch. That's the button there. Okay, so next page is the individuals page. So basically, as you've identified specific individuals, um, you build up a library of known individuals that you can, for instance, sort by survey, sort by species, filter by date range, all those sorts of things. Um, and these are the individuals. So there, these are their names. In this case, they're just good numeric names. Um, but then you can click on that particular individual, um, see various information about them, um, when they were first seen, last seen, what data sets they're from, um, filter the images and look at them, um, see all the images that you do have of them, um, see which sites in your survey they've been detected, um, and then even uh, which individuals they've been seen associating with and stuff like that. Um, in terms of other options, you can also delete um, any um, individuals from particular data sets. So there you can select which data sets and which species. That's if you just want, you, you realize someone's made a hash of it and for a particular data set, you can just wipe those individuals and start again. Um, that's also an option there. And uh, the next option is the analysis page. Um, so here we've got a number of built-in um, analysis tools. Um, so you just simply first select the data set you would like to work with. So let's say um, Forest and Gummo, um, and which, so which survey and which associated orientation set, filter it by date if you want, um, set, choose some set, subset of the sites if you want, um, and then select various analyses. Um, so in this case, you can do like uh, simple stuff like uh, graphing. Um, you can do you can do some graphing. Um, that's uh, graphing of sort of basically anything as a function of time. You can do um, you can do uh, mapping anything as a function of space if you've got your coordinate information there. Um, but there's also some um, tools built around popular R packages. So for instance, the summary analysis will generate um, stuff like your um, your diversity indices and stuff like that. Um, you can do um, uh, activity patterns. You, you, can, you can generate activity patterns. You can generate um, occupancy analyses, as well as even spatial capture recapture once you've identified individuals for a particular species. Um, and again, that's all based on popular R packages. Um, and then as you go along, you can actually view um, the R script associated with that, that analysis, which you can obviously then copy and then download the, the input CSV as well if you prefer to run everything and tweak the, the variables yourself um, on your um, own IDE. 
Um, next, we've got the jobs page. This is just simply um, where you pick up the available the jobs that you can annotate. Um, and for like your workers and stuff like that, this will be their home page. Um, annotation statistics, this just gives you um, the, the annotation statistics of all the people that um, are belong to your organizations or the organization for which you are an administrator for. Um, and that just lets you basically see who they are, you know, contact information and how much work they've done in terms of batches completed as well as annotation time. Um, and you can even specifically then look at um, annotation time as a function of individual uh, surveys, um, which then will let you, for instance, if you're wanting to pay, um, you know, people to work on your surveys for you, um, you can manage that, and, you know, from here. Um, and then lastly, we've got the permissions page, um, which you've seen before, so I'm not really going to go into detail there, but essentially you can see um, these are the permissions that apply to me at the moment. I'm an admin for wildlife conservation, and I've hidden access um, for wild parks. Um, I can then view the users for, for the organization for which, or organizations for which I'm an admin, so in this case, wildlife conservation. Um, you can see myself and um, somebody called Mark. Um, and then you've got these two tabs here for um, data sets that are shared between organizations. Um, so uh, this is the, the shared tabs, the data that you've shared with other organizations, um, and then this data that you receive. And you can um, share surveys and then you know revoke access and stuff like that, all from here. Um, and one last little thing is just your settings. Um, option now to the little cog <clears throat> and so here you can just change for instance your username and email address um, and then we've also got the integrations tab um, so at the moment we've only got um, earth range integrations available um, if you are needing your track tagger sightings of particular species to be synchronized to your earth range account please contact us and we can arrange that for you and get that set up and I think that's that.